Mountain bike disc brakes are brilliant and most of the time work really well with barely any maintenance. Of course, you're gonna to need to change those pads and perhaps bleed them every now and then just to keep them feeling nice. But there are loads of easy mistakes to make when working on your brakes. So today, we're gonna to be looking at a number of those mistakes and seeing what we can learn from them. Shimano actually asked us to make this video because there are so many common mistakes made when working on your brakes at home. Now, some of these mistakes can lead to your brakes not working particularly well. Some of them can mean loud squeaking and squealing and annoying things like that. And actually some of them, more importantly, can mean the difference of your brakes not working at all. So let's get to the bottom of this. Contaminating pads is an absolute classic and it's something we could all do really easily. So you just gotta take a bit of care. Now it's for this reason, we recommend using a bottled lubricant on your chain because you can apply a droplet of lube basically to each link really easily and you're not wasting lube. But you can't knock the convenience of a spray lube. And of course you're gonna to need to use water displacers like Bike Protect and even a polish near your bike from time to time. And it's that stuff that creates the mist when you spray it that gets near your pads and completely wrecks them. Uh, especially if you're working on your bike outdoors because it's always gonna be a bit of a breeze that's gonna carry that stuff. So use a bit of shop towel behind where you're spraying, something like that, just to protect your disc rotors. And uh, if you're particularly bothered, you can even get disc rotor covers, especially for this sort of job. Now, in particular, the polish is something worth mentioning because a lot of riders are now starting to use polish on their frames to stop mud sticking to it and it does work really well. And you can also use it on your suspension forks in particular around the stanchions just to make them feel a bit more slippery. If you're gonna do that, you've gotta be careful because if you're gonna spray in the direction of that like I keep seeing on social media, that mist is gonna go all over your brakes. And yep, you're cruising straight to A&E if brakes don't work. using old or the wrong brake fluid. Okay, so for starters, only ever use fresh brake fluid in your brakes, whatever variety that is. If your fluid looks like this and it's a bit gunky and it's got stuff hanging in it, discard it. Get it recycled, get yourself some fresh fluid. Now with brake fluid, it comes in two major varieties. There's dot fluid and there's mineral. DOT is a regulated fluid, it stands for Department of Transportation, and mineral is an unregulated fluid. Now you might think, hmm, that doesn't sound quite as good, but actually, this is quite cool because of the fact designers like Shimano can have their own fluid and their entire system designed around it. So arguably it could be a better approach, but the point is you need to use the correct fluid. Now within mineral fluid, there's various different systems available. Magura, for example, use a blue fluid. So you'd only use Magura fluid with Magura brakes. Shimano use the red fluid, only use this with Shimano brakes and so forth. Get the right fluid, okay? Now one last thing just to say about brake fluids is mineral fluid, the coolest thing about it is it doesn't absorb moisture over time. So you can afford to have a big old workshop size one of these, which is great value. Whereas dot fluid actually absorbs moisture from the second that you open the container, over time it will absorb moisture. So it means if you're not gonna use all of that in one hit, you need to discard it really. So only use a small container. It's the best way to save yourself a few pennies. Uh, pass us the oil please, Josh. Da. Ooh, says more. I love a bit of this stuff. And one last thing with mineral fluids. Because of the fact they're using a mineral fluid or a mineral oil in them, some people are questioning whether you can use alternatives like baby oil, even olive oil or sesame oil. Well, no is the answer, okay? So yes, it will fill the cavity in your brakes and yes, your brakes will technically work. But as soon as they get heat in them or uh, you start getting air in the system, it's just gonna be horrendous. There'll be no consistency and ultimately, you're sacrificing your own safety there because brakes are probably the most important part of your bike. Use the correct fluid in your brakes or you're asking for trouble. A poor brake bleed is probably the number one problem that most people have with their brakes. Now, of course, bleeding brakes is a fairly systematic process. You've got to push uh, fluid into the system and get the air out. But in particular with your rear brake on a mountain bike, there's loads of points of which you've got acute angles that that hose is uh, moving to to accommodate the frame design. You're gonna get trapped air in there. So when you're bleeding your brakes, take a bit more time than you think you need to, tap along the hose all the way and help that air find its way out. In particular, 
The biggest thing you need to do is make sure the caliper is the lowest point on the bike and your brake lever is the highest point to really help that air sort of migrate out of the system there. You can even do what's called a mini bleed where you don't need to do a full system bleed with both ends open. You just have the lever end open and the lever up nice and high and work your way along that hose, tapping away and you can help the air get out of the system quicker. Do your brake levers feel slightly different when you're using them, i.e. does one travel to the bars a bit more than the other? Well, if that's the case, it's easy to adjust. All you need really is a screwdriver, possibly an Allen key, depending on your particular model, and a tape measure. Now, the lever adjustment point of how far away your brake lever is from the handlebars, this can be adjusted on all models and brands of brake, sometimes with a knob on the actual lever like these ones, and sometimes using a small Allen key, uh, often a two and a half mil, perhaps a three mil, depending on the model of your brakes. But on other brakes that have a few more features on them, such as these XT brakes, there's a secondary adjustment point. This one is called free stroke. On your brakes, it might be called bite point adjustment or something similar like that. And that is specifically in charge of basically when your brake pads contact the rotor. So it's an adjustable point of contact there. When you make this adjustment on the free stroke, it actually moves the position of your brake lever slightly. So you'll have to compensate by using your brake lever adjustment as well. Get the tape measure out, get adjusting, and you can have both of your brake levers feeling absolutely identical. There's no reason for them not to. And whilst on the subject of brake lever adjustments, are yours even in the same position on the handlebars? Well, this is another common one. We see this all the time. So start off by making sure your grips are installed correctly on the handlebars, making sure they're correctly on, and then get a tape measure out. You wanna measure your brake levers to make sure they're inboard by the same amount, and then have a look at the angle of them. Now, some handlebars helpfully have little markings on, so you can actually correlate the markings on both sides, but if yours don't, then use a spirit level. It's purpose made. Dragging brake pads. Yeah, this one is really annoying and an actual classic mistake to make. Joan, seriously, I'm telling you, you've got to use Allen keys. You can't just keep using that lump of... Uh, uh, hold on, I thought I heard something. So when you replace your brake pads, which we all need to do at some point, you need to reset the system. Now I know that some of you, because I've done this myself, will probably have made a mistake at some point where you just pop the new pads in and maybe that lever just doesn't travel that much and you find they drag a bit. So what you need to do is reset those pistons. Uh, you can either do this with your old pads in using one of these pad space tools just to wiggle them back into place or you could use a tire lever. Make sure that it's a nylon or a plastic one though because that's none damaging to the pistons themselves. Now, as your brake pads wear on a bike, the pistons will naturally move out to compensate, and you'll probably find your lever travels a bit more than usual, so you'll compensate with either the free stroke screw, which you have on Shimano, or perhaps you've got a little dial on another brand of brakes there. You have to make sure you reset those again when you change your pads and push those pistons back, otherwise, they're gonna drag. Perhaps your brakes aren't feeling quite as powerful as you feel they should be, or perhaps as your friends say theirs are. Well, this primarily is down to them not being bedded in properly, okay? So when you bed in your brake pads, the whole point of this is to deposit an even amount of material around the rotors. Never drag your brakes, uh, as in like lightly drag them. What you wanna do is find a nice, long, sort of medium gradient hill, work your way down the hill, pull in the brakes probably at two thirds of the power, okay? And until you come to nearly a stop and then carry on rolling and repeat to get to the bottom of the hill. By the time you get to the bottom, your brakes will start sort of grabbing a bit. Repeat the hill all over again, but at a higher speed with more braking power. Again, not quite stopping, but coming to right slow down point, off the brakes again. And by the time you get to the bottom of the hill, your brakes should be bedded in nice and evenly. Now, if your brakes are squealing, or perhaps, they're, again, they're just not quite as powerful as they should be, they could be contaminated. In which case, well, the first thing to say is when you have contaminated brakes and rotors, you're probably not gonna get them back again. However, it is worth a try if you're willing to do this. 
get them off your bike, use something like a disc brake cleaner and completely clean them. I'd also recommend actually cleaning them again using almost boiling water with some fairy liquid and then again with boiling water, basically everything possible to clean them, leave them to dry completely. Don't be tempted to uh, skip this stage. Then get some coarse emery paper and give the rotors basically a bit of a scouring down to give them a bit of traction on them and the same on the brake pads and then reinstall onto your bike and do the bedding in process. Now hopefully your brakes might work. Now this can help if your brakes have just had a light misting of oil, just something like that. But if they've been properly contaminated with a load of oil, you're gonna need some new ones. Using the wrong cleaning products on your brakes. Now ideally, you wanna use as little cleaning products as possible near your braking rotor surfaces and on your brake pads. They do a pretty good job of self-cleaning as they need to when you ride and often only need a bit of water on them. However, we all know riding on the roads, you can pick up salts and other lubricants off cars and other bikes and things that get onto your brakes, in which case you're gonna need to use a dedicated brake cleaner. Now you won't beat proper disc brake cleaner. However, there are other products on the market you can use. Most bike cleaners, like the bike washes you get, are fine to use around your brakes, but definitely check if you're unsure. At all costs, avoid getting anything else near your brakes, any waxes, uh, even a rag you clean your bike with, don't go near your brakes, and even your bare hands. You have oils in your hands, so you can get onto those rotors and mess them right up. Your brake hose routing and also the length of them is actually quite vital. Now, if your brake hoses are too long, it's not the end of the world, they're gonna work fine, but you could snag them. So ideally you want them to be trimmed down nice and short for your controls. But don't go too short because that itself can lead to more problems. So in the ideal world, you wanna leave them, leave them long enough that your bars can actually rotate as far as they can without hindrance. So if you do crash, they're not gonna basically rip out at the brake lever end. I've seen that happen lots of times. Now also, it does constrict you to your brake lever angle and the height of your controls if, you're, if your hosing is too short. The other one to look out for, another classic, is routing your brake hose for the front fork on the outside of the fork. It's an easy mistake to make, and although everything works fine, it's easy to snag on things when you're riding, and if you have a crash, it's gonna be crimped, okay? So make sure your hose routing is on the inside of the fork, and they should last a lot longer. When you're installing a set of brakes to your bike, you may well have to shorten the hoses. Now, when you do this, it's vital that you do it correctly, okay? So, you need to cut the hose down completely 90 degrees. If it's not, the barbed attachment is not gonna sit inside completely flush and then the olive will not create the seal it needs to to stop air getting in and fluid getting out. Now, something else to add is don't reuse those olives. Don't be tempted to do that, even if they look okay. Use fresh fittings every single time. And because you're working on your brakes, then really you should be wearing gloves and ideally some eyewear as well. Have you ever gone to uh, rock your bike backwards and forwards on the brake and felt like something's loose? Yeah, now sometimes that can be your disc rotors. Uh, now if they are loose, I should need to tell you to check them and make sure they're nice and tight. There's two major ways of doing this. There's the six bolt system like this one. So definitely make sure each one of those six bolts is securely tightened. Or there's the center lock system, which has a single point of adjustment here that uses a bottom bracket tool. But more than likely, it won't be your disc rotors that are loose, and it might actually just be the pads themselves, which fractionally move inside the caliper, in which case, you've got nothing to worry about, but it won't hurt you to check. And finally, and probably the most painfully, is the brakes being the wrong way around. Now, for whatever reason, you might be getting a hire bike, you might be loaning a bike for someone, borrowing a friend's bike, check the brakes are the same that you're familiar with. I ride my front brake on the right, my rear brake on the left, and I couldn't possibly ride any other way. So definitely check, otherwise it could be seriously, seriously painful. Uh, as with all of our videos, hopefully this one has been useful. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments underneath, and let us know if you've made any of these classic braking mistakes. Uh, thanks for watching the video, and see you in the next one. ta -ra.